Uh, Drew, many people might not know that you're actually a music major. How did that come about? Yeah, when I was in college, uh, I spent four years studying music. I was the president of the, uh, the college choir and also sang with a traveling ensemble. Uh, we traveled all over the southeast, as it were, singing in churches and different things like that. Um, I, I became a music major because uh, I, really, I really wanted to be famous. Um, and that didn't work out. Uh, so I loved, I played the guitar in a band whenever I was uh, in high school and then right into college and just really, really enjoyed that. So uh, I've always, always loved music, always loved to sing. Uh, I love playing the guitar, playing the piano, that kind of stuff. So that just kind of came about that way. Um, and now if I could uh, encourage people, I encourage them not to study music as a uh, discipline, maybe in a collegiate uh, collegiate environment because it's really hard to get a job uh, <laughs> primarily so uh, that being said um, I really did enjoy my time studying music but um, it's yeah it's one of those things that God used to shape me and prepare me um, that being said I'm I know I'm no world-class musician but it was a fun it was a fun gig while I was in college so good all right <clears throat> you've been married just over a year tell everybody how you met well, ironically, uh, we both grew up in the same area our whole lives, and it was a super small area, so everybody knew everybody, and before we actually met, um, I think we would both come to terms in our life that, you know, we were satisfied in our walk with the Lord, and, you know, we weren't pushing things, trying to necessarily look to date, but we just kept, or in my part, I know that there were so many people that kept mentioning drew buyers to me over and over and over again and if you're from a small town you know that you know anybody who's single you know everybody's mom knows someone for you and so I was like oh yeah sure that's fine and I just kept putting it off putting it off but finally a good friend of mine uh, eventually said hey have, do you, have you ever met this guy named Drew Byers I feel like you guys would be really great together and uh, she was a mutual friend of Drew's as well obviously and um, I trusted her, so I said, okay, okay, I've heard this name so many times, but I trust you enough to say that if he's a good guy, then I'd be open to it, so. Yeah, she lied <laughs> for me, so, no, uh, yeah, this, this is the same kind of thing, a bunch of my friends knew Jessica and knew me, and they kept saying, hey, I think you guys would uh, really get along, you should ask her out on a date, blah, 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 but we, our paths never really crossed, and I, you know. Uh, we'd, we'd never met in person, and so this mutual friend, uh, thankfully, uh, we both trusted her enough, I guess, to give it a shot. So we went out to coffee, and then we went on a couple more dates, and that was pretty much it. So Yeah, and marriage is fun so far, especially during quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jessica, teaching is a noble but demanding profession. Why did you choose that? Um... I honestly can't remember a time that I did not want to be a teacher. From the time I was four years old, I was, you know, trying to teach my little sister everything I could teach her in our bedroom. And, um, you know, I, I genuinely believe it was a calling in my life. Uh, there was one point in college where I considered uh, career missions, and I felt like maybe the Lord was calling me to that, but I came to the conclusion that the classroom is one of the biggest mission fields that I can be in, and that's proven itself true year after year, so I'm just so thankful that uh, God called me to that mission field, and uh, I'm just very thankful for that. Nice. <clears throat> All right, Drew, you grew up in the same area your whole life. How do you think that shaped you? Yeah, growing up in the same place for my whole life, uh, I think it taught me uh, a lot about contentment. Um, obviously, the place where I grew up was um, a small town, and it didn't afford a lot of the things that uh, people, especially younger people, really uh, prioritize. There's just not a lot to do, as it were. Um, so because of that, I think it caused me to be um, content with the circumstances that I had. Um, which were very good ones. Uh, it doesn't you don't need a lot of things to live a good and fulfilling life. Um, so I think it helped me put my priorities in place and that simple things or 
Uh, smaller things aren't necessarily bad, and bigger isn't necessarily always better. Um, so I think that's a, a few things. I, I think another thing is it taught me that um, people are people, regardless of where you go. If you go to uh, a big town, if you go to a small town, that people are constantly searching for the same kinds of things, um, regardless of where their circumstances are. And um, and you see that played out on the way they the way they search for things. What you know, we're all. Um, searching for some kind of significance or meaning in our lives and uh, that plays out in the same way uh, in a small town as it does in a large town. Other people are going to turn towards Christ and turn towards uh, his uh, His mandate on their life and turn towards his call on their life where they're going to turn to something else. Uh, and the something else's are different maybe in a small town versus a large town, but um, there's a lot of similarities that are there. So I think you learn a lot about people too um, just by living in the same place for a long time. And the other thing that was kind of fun and kind of annoying um, was that I, everywhere I went, I knew everyone that was everywhere. Uh, and so uh, there was an ice cream place in Athens that was only open from uh, the beginning of March to the end of October, I guess it was. And we'd play this game to see how many people we could see when we went there that we knew. Um, and it was always, you know, uh, 15, 16, you know, 12, whatever it might be. And you always saw all these people that you knew regardless of whether you wanted to or not. So part of that was really fun. Uh, part of that was really annoying when you're just trying to, you know, go to the grocery store and get a few things and it takes an hour to get through because you have to stop and talk to everybody. So um, those are some of the things I learned, I guess, living in a small town for a long time. Same. Uh, yeah, that's, I would say that's probably a difficult question to answer just because where I grew up plays such a huge part in my life. Um, I would love to, you know, for whoever's watching this, I'd love to sit down and share part of my testimony with you sometime. And uh, I would say just growing up in the same place my whole life. Um, Drew and I have very different testimonies, even though we grew up in a similar place. I grew up in a smaller town just outside of Athens, actually. And one of the things that growing up in that location taught me is just that there are so many cycles that need to be broken in people's lives, you know, whether it's cycles of addiction or cycles of poverty. It's another reason why I became a teacher because I knew that education was so important to breaking that generational cycle of poverty and those cycles of addictions and teaching people a different way. Um, but I would be happy to share a little bit more of my personal testimony with anybody that would love to sit down and chat sometime. Cool. <clears throat> if you had a choice, a vacation spots, where would it be? I know my answer. Go ahead. Mine is Ireland. So I've been trying to talk Drew into taking me for about, you know, since we've been married now. Uh, beaches are great. I love the beach, but I love learning about different cultures. And so for some reason, Ireland is the answer. Maybe I'm not sure why, but that's where I want to go next. Yeah, we were supposed to go this year and we didn't, so... Now I'll have to plan that for some time in the future. Um, I want to go. Uh, I, I would love to be in the mountains and be in the in the woods and away from everybody. So uh, I took a trip to Yosemite this past uh, October, and I'd love to go back there again. Excellent. Um, all right. <clears throat> all right, Drew, you're an average reader. Besides material for sermon prep, what else do you like to read? Uh, I Yeah, I, I get on kicks where I read different uh, different disciplines. Um, I like to be systematic theology. <laughs> yeah, right now I'm working through a fairly ambitious read. Um, it's a systematic theology um, that's newly translated. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> so yeah, so I'm working through some stuff like that. But I also like to read. Uh, I've been working through slowly the. Chronicles of Narnia. I've read them before, but reading those, uh, reading those through again, uh, I try to balance uh, stuff that's a little more uh, ambitious with stuff that's a little more lighthearted, a little bit easier to read. So, um, working through some of those, some of those things, stuff that's newly published, then you know, in uh, Christian publishing, I try to, I try to stay on top of that stuff to be on top of that conversation. So that's some of what I read. If you have particular questions, you're always well, always welcome to ask me what I'm. Uh, what I'm reading, and I'm glad to tell you. So, all right, Jessica, tell us a little bit about your family. Um, back home, uh, living in Nyota, my dad lives there. He and I are super close, so uh, he's a bit of a hermit, and he would be fine with me saying that on camera. He so he's probably loving the quarantine right now, but he is just an awesome guy, and uh, 
my mom. Uh, she has a phenomenal testimony. Again, you know, I'd be happy to uh, share with anybody that wants to sit down and chat, but she's a wonderful woman and a very strong Christian now. I have a younger sister, she's two years younger than me, who has a almost two-year-old little boy named Jax, who is precious. So that's my family back home. Um, my grandparents are also back home. And uh, so yeah, every, everybody's back in Nyota right now, but all, all great people and all excited for our journey here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, mom and dad uh, are back home. Uh, in Athens, uh, we've lived in the same house, or they've lived in the same house my whole life. I've lived there the whole time I lived with them. Uh, I have one older brother, he's three years older than me, uh, and his wife, uh, and they are two kids. Um, yeah, so I love my family. Uh, they're, uh, yeah, we're really close, we talk a lot. They're the ones who were in Athens, my brother doesn't live in Athens, but the rest of them who were in Athens were not too excited about the move, but. Uh, they they know that uh, we're in a we're in a good place and we where we need to be, uh, so grateful for that. Um, yeah, I, we love love our family. Uh, they're very supportive of us, and we're really grateful for them. All right, last question: What are you looking forward to when the social distancing regulations are relieved? Do you have a good answer? Well, mine is just meeting people. I've been dying oh. to meet people. I'm sorry I'm really nervous on a camera, but I'm really excited to actually sit down and get to know you guys in person. Um, I, you know, we're both pretty social people. Um, you know, just getting back into a routine. I, I miss my kids at school, obviously, and um, just the, the normalcy of life. But I most look forward to just getting to know everybody, not through a camera. Yeah, my thing I'm looking forward to the most is going out to eat. Um, <laughs> just honestly, I... Uh, I love going out to eat, so uh, that's been the, that's been the most one of the most difficult parts about the quarantine. Uh, and there's lots of great restaurants in Gallatin, from what I've uh, read on the internet and uh, what I've driven around and, and seen. So uh, love to know your favorite restaurant recommendations. Um, and the other side of that is that I do most of the cooking in our house and. Um, it's great. I don't know what he's talking about. I, I think this quarantine thing is great as far yeah. as food is concerned. So anyway, it's nice to. I mean, it's just really nice to have someone else cook you cook dinner from time to time <laughs> so I'm really excited about that that's honestly the uh, one of the things I'm really looking forward to after this is all said and done alright anything else that you've got freestyle uh, freestyle, freestyle. Mm -hmm. I can dance no you can't <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just really grateful to be here and really excited to um, get uh, get things rolling at the church and uh, to be with you guys weekly and uh, meet with you guys uh, as often as we're able, uh, Jessica and I really feel honored and humbled to serve here and in this way. And uh, we're really looking forward to uh, what the Lord's going to do in the coming months and coming years uh, that we have to be here at Creekside.